Yeah, of course I know how to play the blues. See? Maybe not exactly what I had in mind if I were to ask a musician that question. I'd be hoping to hear something more like this. Now, there are certainly a lot of ways you can work on playing the blues, but making sure that this element of your playing is under your total command is one of the first things you can do to make yourself sound like an authentic improviser. What's up, everyone? Thanks for tuning in today. Today, we're going to dive into what is one of the most foundational elements of our language as improvisers and that is playing the blues. Now, it's important to remember that the blues doesn't just refer to a scale or to a form. It's sort of a whole component of the jazz improvisational language that covers a lot of different bases from note selection to feel to inflection. And today we're gonna to break it down a little bit and talk about some things that you can work on, not necessarily individual licks, but conceptual things that will help get more of this sort of playing into your own voice and make it sound authentic and natural and integrated into your playing. We're gonna break down four different things that you can work on to help get more of this blues sensibility into your playing. And again, we're gonna explore some actual sort of like licks that illustrate these, but I think you should think a little more broadly. They're not just these specific licks. It's the concepts that sort of construct these different types of lines. So the first thing we're gonna think about is creating ideas that use both the flat third and the sixth of the scale. The ideas that we're creating by using both a flat third and the flat six, some people would probably associate those with what we call the major blues scale, or it's sometimes referred to as the Kansas City scale. It's basically just a major pentatonic scale that also has a flat third, so both a major third and a lowered third. Thinking about the scales can certainly be helpful, but we really want to connect with the language and the ideas that are connected with this sound. Let's just listen to a few short examples of some common ideas that use this sort of gesture. There are three ideas that use this in different ways. The first one I think is the absolute most classic way that this appears is where we sort of are working through the fifth of that scale up to the flat third and then back down and sort of manipulating inside of that little chunk of the scale. Just getting that little bit of vocabulary and understanding how to manipulate it in lots of different ways just really opens up the doors to a whole other set of sounds that you can use on the blues rather than just sort of the blues scale. For me, this little note combination of six flat third and some of the other notes that are in between there is really like the sound of swing. If you really wanna hear some examples of this, go check out Lester Young. He uses shapes like this all the time in his solos. And most jazz musicians do. It's, it's really prevalent everywhere in jazz, but he's a really great example to check out to get some of these ideas into your playing. And again, those licks I just played, you know, they're not the end all be all. They're just a few examples. You need to use this concept of how do I develop ideas around sort of these shapes um, so you can be really flexible with this stuff. The next area of really gaining good control over our blues playing is really being able to manipulate the minor pentatonic scale. <laughs> Now, surely, if you're somebody who's working on improvisation, you are familiar with the minor pentatonic scale, and it's uh, something that can be used in a wide variety of ways. But when we're talking about playing the blues, being able to manipulate it smoothly through patterns across the entire range of the horn, through melodic shapes, is really, really crucial to feeling like this is an organic part of our language. Let's look at a few examples. <laughs> Now, 
Now, a pretty good range there. We've got just a straight up scale passage to start, then sort of like a blues lick you might have learned in like fifth grade or seventh grade is like my first blues lick, and then also a little quote from Work Song. This is an incredibly flexible piece of harmonic material and we really want to learn how to manipulate it in a variety of different ways. So if we took sort of the idea of the second lick, we should be able to move that kind of shape and gesture across the entire horn, across the entire scale. We can manipulate it in different ways, keeping rhythm similar, keeping sort of shape similar, and we can get a ton of mileage out of these very small ideas, and we can sound pretty authentic pretty quickly just by using the minor pentatonic scale. And again, I encourage you not to think so much about the scale. It's an important piece of theoretical information. We really want to think about the ideas that are created by that scale or that inform the scale. All right, the third thing that we can do to help make our blues playing feel more integrated with the rest of the stuff we have together is really thinking about how our blues stuff fits in with the harmonic stuff that we're working on. Many times when we're gonna be leaning on things like the minor pentatonic scale or like some of these blues scales, we're probably gonna be ending up outside of the key or outside of the chords that we are on in that moment. Let's look at a little example of this in context of a 2-5-1. So on the screen, you can see that I've got a 2-5-1 to B flat, and I've superimposed one of those minor pentatonic licks that I just played a moment ago. You can see, for example, on beat two of the first measure or beat two of the second measure, I hit a D flat in both those places. Now, in both a C minor seven and just a straight up F7 dominant, that is not gonna be in that chord in any way, shape, or form. It's gonna be momentarily dissonant. Now this idea is a very strong melody, and so it's really gonna feel pretty good. We're gonna have a little tension and then release. However, at the end of this lick, I also change it just a little bit so I end up on a nice juicy B flat to resolve, and that makes it feel a little more inside the changes. When we're working on improving our blues playing, we don't just wanna kind of keep blues over here in one place and all of our change playing stuff over here in another place. We want them to be integrated. All of the great jazz musicians through the tradition of this music were able to integrate these two things. Uh, go listen to Charlie Parker. He does a great job of playing the blues, then playing some bebop, right back to the blues. Um, to me, he is the prototypical example of this sort of playing, and we want that in our playing. Let's just look at a couple examples here. Now you notice in each example, I'm gonna put my chord tones in red that I'm resolving to. All right, you can see how chord tones were part of all of those ideas. However, let's just look at the very first idea and see how that one shakes out. Now I'm playing B flat seven, and you can see how I resolve to chord tones in sort of key places. The first part of the lick is sort of an enclosure idea, but it uses kind of some of our like blues stuff. When I just hear the idea like that out of context, it sounds more like I might finish off by playing a blues idea, something like this. And that certainly sounds good, but I change the direction I'm going and land on some chord tones, and it feels a little more like integrated into the harmony of the tune. I really get this sense that, hey, I've resolved to B flat dominant seven, which is what the rhythm section would be playing in this particular case. Now, certainly you can play it whatever you want to, and there's plenty of times where I'm just playing straight up blue stuff that has no relationship to the key, but this ability to integrate and sort of shift in and out of playing very like blues driven ideas to playing change playing, chord driven ideas, really makes your playing sound authentic and like it's informed by the tradition in my opinion. All right, the final thing that we can work on from a conceptual standpoint with this blues stuff is thinking a little bit about inflection. For us as trombone players, we have a ton of options to play different types of inflections on notes. Scoops, falls, slide vibrato, all this type of stuff. It's all kind of an open door for us. So we wanna learn how to use it in the best way possible. Now for many of us as trombone players, when we think about inflection, we probably immediately go to the more like greasy parts of playing the horn.
And there's certainly a lot of places where that feels great and that's absolutely the right thing to do. However, I would encourage you to find some of the more subtle, soft ways you can use inflection in your playing, not just all of sort of the immediate in your face, really, you know, kind of slapping the listener in the face with the slide. The first one that I really like to think about is using sort of a little vocal trill um, on some of the notes. Uh, if we're thinking of a B flat seven chord, this works really great when we're going from like the six to the flat seven or the four to the five or the second to the flat three, and then eventually resolving to the chord tone that's below each one of those. So let's look at the example, and I think you'll see what I'm talking about. So I've labeled these as grace notes, but I'm gonna play all these just on my slide. I'm not gonna use my tongue at all. Then if you combine that with maybe just a little bit of scoop into that note, You really get something that is very vocally derived, but it's incredibly subtle. It gives a beautiful softness to this sort of inflected style of playing. Another one that I really love is falling into a note. Now, not falling through the partials into the note like we might think of we do in a big band, but actually using our slide. Again, I've labeled as a grace note here, but I'm really just doing one articulation and then using the slide. So finding ways to experiment with inflection outside of sort of the most typical, just big scoops, big falls, you know, that sort of side of the trombone, which is great, don't get me wrong. There is definitely a place for that. But by finding these more subtle ways, we can get in touch with a whole different area of sound and make the trombone a more interesting and nuanced instrument to listen to. All right, I hope that helps all of you think of some new ways to work on your blues playing. I know with my own students, and even in my own playing, this is something I have to constantly revisit and find new ways to work through it because it's just a never-ending process of getting this together. It's an incredibly important part of the jazz language, and you could spend your entire life getting this stuff together. And so while these individual licks and stuff I showed you today, they're great. But I would encourage you not to stop with those. Don't necessarily think, hey, I've got to just learn these in all 12 keys. You want to think about those concepts that we discussed and try to learn how to manipulate those in your own playing so you can have a really wide spectrum of possibilities to use when you are playing the blues. All right, we'll see all of you in the woodshed.